Now tonight, under uh, we're going to talk macro mineral scales from magnesium. And just to take you back a bit, a couple of sessions ago, we talked about the food uh, the food chain, and we said you are the result of what you eat. And if you, on a daily basis, consume in your diet all the elements in the chain, your chain is strong. But if you are uh, uh, deficient in any one of these elements and sub elements, you are weakening your chain of health. And then tonight we're going to focus specifically on the minerals. Now, when it comes to minerals, you have what you call macro minerals. It means they're very critical for the whole biochemistry function of the body on a daily basis. Then you have micro minerals that are all important, but you need microscopic quantities of it. Uh, and the challenge is if it's not there, it has an effect but you don't need large amounts of it. And tonight we're going to specifically focus on two macro minerals, calcium and magnesium. Um, calcium rich foods, uh, typically the, the dairy, the dairies, uh, fish, sardines, salmon, dark leafy vet vegetables, nuts, herbs. And interesting that food sources for both, basically both elements, magnesium and calcium, uh, seem to, to be the same. Now, when we look at calcium, uh, our, it was interesting for me to, say, to see how many of the properties and benefit of calcium also apply to magnesium, as if they're almost two sides to the same coin. Now, specifically, calcium is important for the building of bones, teeth, gums, assist with regular heartbeat, uh, transmission of nerve impulses, lowers blood pressure and cholesterol levels, and is involved in the activation of enzymes to break down fat, and it inhibits lead absorption. In other words, if you have sufficient calcium, then it's, it's, you can't easily absorb lead. Now, why is that uh, an issue? With our current, uh, all the gases uh, that we get from the cars, it has lead in it, and uh, it's interesting, and I think uh, Abigail will bear me out on that. A lot of people, analysis show up traces of lead poisoning. All right, so just to con uh, concentrate further on calcium, what is very interesting to know is your bones, the bone structure is almost like the bank of calcium. So it means whatever the, uh, the, uh, the body needs in terms of calcium, the body only is the only entity that knows how much calcium it needs. If at that point in time you're, you don't have enough free calcium in your diet and in the blood, the body will then go and leach it out of the bone structure. If you have surplus in the blood, it will then go and put it back in the bone. And we have had results where people had bone density increase after they started to use the correct uh, chelated calcium. Uh, and on a constant basis through the various bodily processes, you are losing calcium, which is then finally excreted in the urine. Now, how do you know you are deficient in calcium? Brittle nails, one of the good, good indications. I was, it was interesting for me, this, aching joints, rheumatoid arthritis, and muscle cramps, let me just check. Okay, muscle cramps, heart palpitations, that happened quite a lot with some people. Osteoporosis, obviously. And then things like hyper, hyper, I can't express it now. Hypertensions, high blood pressure, insomnia, and even a lot of young people suffer with, from that nowadays. And then the side effect of it, which is linked to the whole nervous system, is depression and or hyperactivity. And I think a lot of kids nowadays shows a lack of calcium, uh, which causes a whole lot of hyperactivity. And then I found this interesting uh, illustration that talks about calcium because I was looking for something way back. We had a, a teacher in New Life who explained to us in layman's term how important calcium is for your nervous system. And it basically says uh, on a, during the day or at night when you go to bed, it, you, uh, you have exhausted your nervous system the body then repairs the nervous system. So it's almost the main priority for the body is to repair the nervous system. And it does it by putting a myelin sheet around the nerve cells. 
and think of it as uh, electric wire, uh, con uh, which is then the conduit for electricity. But if you don't insulate that electric wire, it will start sparking off with everything it touches. So this myelin sheet almost acts as insulation so that the nervous system can do its work during the day. But this myelin sheet then gets consumed during the day. And have you found that you probably have more, uh, call it emotional energy for handling crises in the morning, but by about four or five o'clock, you become snappy and, and irritable and stuff like that. And that's where the calcium comes in. It's to, you need it to then at night replace it so that you can have energy again uh, in terms of your nerves and all the other things. Then magnesium, very much the same. I haven't added new things, but it just uh, 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 the old things that so similar to calcium, but the new things would be like it's a vital catalyst in enzyme activity to produce energy. So if you start feeling a lack of energy, it could be that you're low in calcium and dramatically reduce birth defects. And deficiency symptoms, it may cause asthma, chronic fatigue, and interesting, um, if people start building up kidney stones, it's often due to a lack of magnesium because magnesium uh, stops the body to, to produce kidney stones. And then chronic pain, which is similar to the to, uh, calcium when we talked about rheumatoid arthritis and, and joint pains, the same here with chronic pain. So just uh, almost in summary, <laughs> the nerve nutrients, so anyone who suspect that I'm irritable and I don't know what's wrong with me and even uh, some other issues with pain, make sure that you have your B-complex up and then in terms of minerals, make sure that you up your calcium and magnesium. Then just uh, RDA, uh, if you remember a previous conversation, RDA stands for recommended daily allowance, but what they forgot to say is an M before, a minimum recommended daily allowance. They haven't really tested at what stage is it the optimum because our bodies are different. But for calcium, they uh, estimate that if we do eat a healthy, balanced diet, we should get about 600 milligram of calcium from our diet, which means in terms of the recommended daily allowance, we are still deficient. Uh, and as you get older, Men and women, you need more calcium. Now, um, just remember when you say minimum recommended daily allowance, it means below this level, you will start showing deficiency symptoms. And for magnesium, it is 310 to 410 milligrams per day. And uh, optimum levels is estimated around about 2,500 milligrams per day of the two. So to summarize, um, obviously you need to have a good diet, but if you then get about 600 milligrams of it from your diet, you are still deficient by at least 400 to 600 milligrams. And they estimate on average people are deficient by 600 milligrams. So New Life has got a CalMac, which is calcium and magnesium, and it's slow release. And it uh, is in a ratio of, uh, half magnesium to, to full calcium. So like a 50% magnesium calcium ratio that they found is the best uh, long-term results out there in the market. What is unique about the New Life uh, CalMac is first of all, it does the work of supporting strong bones and more, and it even have uh, some vitamin D3 in it. So if you keep on the CalMac, you don't need to take additional vitamin D. And important is the chelation. Now, calcium and magnesium as minerals are very difficult for the body to absorb. Uh, but by chelating it with the double amino acid uh, chain, remember amino acids are proteins, your body loves it, loves it and it absorbs it readily into the system where the blood then pulls off the amino acids, use it for protein and releases the calcium and magnesium as in free floating ions to do the job that it's supposed to do. And therefore, there's no buildup of calcium in the bone structure. Uh, uh, well, you, the, you, you do need to uh, build up calcium in the bone, but what I mean here, a lot of people who use the wrong calcium, 
they find that it causes kidney stones and form all sorts of lumps. Uh, it's a high potency, easy to swallow, and it's pharmaceutically poor, uh, pure. All right, so I think that concludes then the discussion on Calmac and magnesium. We're just gonna take a quick break here and open the floor for anyone who wants to add a comment or a question.